hi welcome back so in this video we are going to talk about the ratio test and how we use it to determine if series are converging so the reason we have tests like the ratio test is that not all series are easily categorized and so we want general tests for convergence that apply to any type of series so we've looked at geometric series which are of the form a times r to the n and we've talked about how they converge if the absolute value of r is less than one but not all series are geometric, and so we need some tests that apply to other types of series. So unfortunately, it isn't as simple as just having one test. We have lots of tests that we often need to try. There's the limit comparison test, or just the strict comparison test. There's the integral test, there's the ratio test, and there's the root test. So there's lots of tests to determine convergence, and we're just gonna focus on the ratio test because it works in lots of cases, and it gives you a good sense for how we think about series that applies to power series and Taylor series. So please know that what we're talking about today isn't expansive and doesn't cover all of the types of tests for series. At the time I am recording this video, I am only doing a little bit of sequences and series as part of a course I am teaching, and so we really only have the time to focus on one of these tests. We're gonna focus specifically on the ratio test because how it relates to Taylor series and power series, but just know that these other tests are out there, and if you're taking a full course on sequences and series, you're probably expected to learn these and know how they work. Okay, so the basic idea of the ratio test is that we are going to look at the ratio of terms in the same way that we did for a geometric series. So for a geometric series, the ratio of terms was just r. We called r the common ratio. But now we're going to take series that aren't geometric and sort of look at them and pretend they were geometric and see how they behave. Let me tell you what that means. So the ratio test compares the given series to a geometric series, and we'll use a similar set of conditions to determine convergence. Let's try an example to show you what this might look like, and I'll make sure to state the ratio test in its entirety at the end of this video. So let's look at the series, which is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of n over two to the n. So if this n in the numerator wasn't there, and we just had one over two to the n, this would be geometric, and so we would look at the r value, which would be 1 half, and we'd say that it converges since the absolute value of a half is less than 1. And we could even determine where it converges to, if it was geometric, by doing a over 1 minus r, so 1 over 1 minus 1 half, which is 1 over 1 half, which is 2. So if this were to be geometric and not have that n in the numerator, we could determine convergence by looking at the r. But what happens when we have n times 1 over 2 to the n, like we have here? So what we are going to do is consider the ratio of subsequent terms. So we're going to take any two terms in this series and see what their ratio is. We're basically going to look at, as we go further and further along the series, do subsequent terms, the terms right next to each other, do they get really close together so that we're basically going to converge since we're getting closer and closer together as we go forward? And if they get close enough, we can determine convergence. So let's consider subsequent terms. I'm going to do n equals k and n equals k plus 1. So I'm choosing the kth term and the k plus 1th term. So for the k plus 1 term, it's k plus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1. And the k term is k over 2 to the k. And we're just going to simplify this to get something we can manage and see what happens with. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm multiplying by 2k over k. And I'm going to rewrite 2 to the k plus 1 as 2 to the k times 2. So this is a common technique we do with ratio tests since we often have k plus 1s floating around. I'm going to split that exponent k plus 1 into two terms, 2 to the k times 2. Now I can cancel my 2 to the k terms, and I'm left with k plus 1 over 2k. Now I can go even further and split this up. So I'm doing k over 2k plus 1 over 2k, and I'm getting 1 half plus 1 over 2k. So I'm doing all of this just to get it as simple as possible because I want to consider what happens as k approaches infinity. So as we go further and further into the series, so we look at further and further terms away, does the ratio get small enough to create convergence? That is, if we call this r the ratio, does the limit as k approaches infinity of r, the absolute value, get less than 1? 
So the absolute value is finding the distance here, sort of like just the positive distance between the two. And we're seeing, is it small enough? Is it less than one? And if so, then we will have a convergent situation. So here, if we look at the limit as k approaches infinity of r, I'm looking at the limit as k approaches infinity of 1 half plus 1 over 2k. So as k approaches infinity, that term with the k in it is going to zero since we're dividing by larger and larger numbers as k approaches infinity. And dividing by larger numbers means you have smaller pieces left over. So I'm really having 1 half plus zero, which is 1 half. And 1 half is less than one, so this converges. Basically, when we look at the ratio of subsequent terms, it gets small enough over time that we're adding smaller and smaller pieces, small enough to converge. Now, we can't determine exactly what it converges to using this method, but we can at least conclude, yes, it converges. Also, just a comment, to do this formally, we use absolute values around R. One of my pet peeves is that mathematicians just kind of slap absolute values on things and move them around and get rid of them without explaining why. And unfortunately, I'm going to do that a little bit here, but the main idea is that it actually doesn't matter most of the time since k is going to positive infinity. So everything we're dealing with is positive already, and absolute value does nothing to positive values because they're already positive. So that's part of the reason why we're just sort of getting rid of them. Truthfully, I just don't really want you to worry about it too much. It's just the formal way to do it, and so I would feel like I was leading you astray if I didn't include it here. The world of series and things to do with them gets a lot deeper than what we're covering, and so I just don't want to do it wrong now to cause problems down the road. Okay, let's do one more example, and then at the end I will show you the ratio test written out. So let's consider this series, which is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of one over n factorial. That n with the exclamation point is n factorial, and I'm choosing this example just to make sure you've seen this concept. So like I said, n with the exclamation point is n factorial, and it represents the following. We start with n, and then we multiply it by n minus one. We multiply that by n minus two times n minus three, etc., all the way until we get down to one. So we're basically taking n and multiplying it by every number below it. So if we were to do 6 factorial, that would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Then 100 factorial would be 100 times 99 times 98 times 97, etc., all the way down until we get to 1. So that factorial notation just helps us represent a really long quantity of a bunch of things being multiplied together, and it gets really big really fast. So 6 factorial is actually a pretty big number, so it helps to just write it as 6 factorial. Okay, so let's look at this series, which is 1 over n factorial. So if we look at the terms, we're starting at n is 0, 1 over 0 factorial. Then we do 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, etc. So we take the convention that 0 factorial is just 1. So I'm getting 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1. Then I have 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 plus 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, etc. So I'm just substituting in what those factorials represent. Then I'm actually getting 1 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 sixth plus 1 24th, etc. So remember, I'm trying to determine if this converges. So as I am adding up terms further and further along, do they get close enough together that I'm basically not adding anything anymore and I'm approaching a certain value? So looking at this, I'm thinking it will converge. When I look at these, the denominators are getting really large and I know factorial grows really fast. So I'm thinking that these fractions are gonna get like really, really small and they're not gonna matter too much and the series will converge. But to do this formally, we use the ratio test and we look at the ratio of subsequent terms. So I'm looking at k plus one and k. All right, so I'm gonna look at the ratio and I have one over k plus one factorial all divided by one over k factorial. So that's the k plus one term in the numerator and the k term in the denominator. To simplify this, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm multiplying by k factorial over one. And then I'm gonna do some neat rewriting to make this even simpler. So in the denominator, that k plus one factorial, I'm gonna write out what it is. So it's k plus 1 times k, that's 1 less, times k minus 1, 1 less, times k minus 2, 
etc., all the way until we get to 1. And looking at this, it's really k plus 1 times the rest of those terms, and the rest of those terms are k factorial. This is a common way that we simplify k plus 1 factorial. We take the k plus 1 out, and what we have left is k factorial. So what I really have here is k factorial over k plus 1 times k factorial. And simplifying that, I'm just getting 1 over k plus 1. So this technique where we take k plus 1 factorial and rewrite it, we do a lot. So you'll see it any time we are doing ratio tests with a factorial. So I'm getting that the ratio of subsequent terms is 1 over k plus 1. And we want to look at what happens to this as k goes to infinity. So as we go further and further into the series. So I'm looking at the limit as k approaches infinity of the absolute value of r. Here as k gets really large, the whole thing is positive. So I'm not worrying about the absolute values. I have the limit as k approaches infinity of 1 over k plus 1. And when I do this, I'm dividing by larger and larger numbers as k approaches infinity, and so I'm getting 0. 0 is less than 1, and so this means that this series is convergent by the ratio test. Now we don't know exactly what it converges to just with this, but we know it does converge. This is a pretty neat series, and so I want to show you a graph really quick of the terms. So I've plotted the set of partial sums here to look at what the sums converge to, just to show you this. So we have 1 plus 1 is 2, that's a second point, and then we do plus 1 half, we get 2.5, and then we do plus 1 six to the next value, and then we start adding those further terms, and we see that it's converging to something between 2.5 and 3. It turns out that this value is actually e, Euler's number. So the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial is e, Euler's number. This totally blew my mind the first time I saw it, and we're going to return to this series later on when we talk about Taylor's series, but I just wanted to comment on it now because I think it's really cool. Okay, so let's talk about what the ratio test says more formally. So if we are given a series, which is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n, we can determine if this series converges by considering the ratio of subsequent terms. So we're looking at the limit as k approaches infinity, of the absolute value of a sub k plus 1 divided by a sub k. And remember, that's the ratio of subsequent terms. Then, if that limit is less than 1, we can say the series converges. If the limit is greater than 1, then the series diverges. And if the limit is equal to 1, then this test is actually inconclusive. So this test doesn't work in all cases, but it works if we had something that's less than 1, or if it's greater than 1, we can determine convergent or divergent. But in the cases where it's equal to 1, we need another test, and that's why those other tests at the beginning exist, like I mentioned. Okay, so that's an introduction to the ratio test. In my next video, I go through some examples using it so you can see how it works in the different cases. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.